All right, let's carry on then with part B of the same question. They, the question we were looking at just now was to find the equation of CM. Yeah. All right, now can you help me out there? Have you thought about this yet? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> okay, what do we need to find the equation of CM? What was the tip? Uh, I gave you a tip just now on, on what to do if the question sounded like this. Uh, well, you could, well, couldn't you just find the gradients? You'd first have to start off and find the gradients. Okay, and how do I do that? Um, good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, remember what I said? If they ask for the equation, you start yeah. off with the standard form. Yeah, the y equals mx plus c. Yes. Now okay. you ask yourself, what do I need? I need a value for the gradient and I need a value for the y-intercept. Yeah. So you were quite right. We now need to find the gradient. Yeah. Now to find the gradient, either it's given to us, you know, or we can deduct it as we did with that line BC, yeah. or we need to calculate it. Now the only way we can calculate the gradient is to use that formula m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Yeah. But we only have point Q. So we can say that's x1 and y1, but now we need another point. Well, isn't m a midpoint of a and b? So couldn't you work yes. that out? Yeah, so using the midpoint formula. Yeah. Alright, so um, M is equal to X1 plus X2 over, over 2, 2 and Y1 plus Y2 over 2. Yeah. And then using points A and B for that. Yeah. So we can say 9 plus 3 over 2 and... 10 minus 8 over 2. Yeah. And that will give us 12 over 2 is 6 and 2 over 2 is 1. Yeah. Alright, and then we see that the midpoint formula actually gives us the answer in coordinate format already. Yeah. Which is nice. So we've got 6 and 1 there. So we can then say uh, 1 minus 4 and 6 minus 9, is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, that is. Right, so it's minus 3 over... What? Uh, minus 3. Mm -hmm. And that gives me? Uh, 1. 1. Right, so now we have the value for M. Yeah. Now we just need to find C. So how are we going to find C? Well, you would you substitute the values of y, m, and x in, and then get c on the one side, get the values on the other side, work it out, and then you should get c. Okay, but which values for x and y am I going to use? Hmm. Uh, x. Okay, now I'm a bit lost. Well, let me help you out. We've got actually a choice. We can either use m or q. Yeah. Okay, so you can just so you can actually just choose one of them. Yeah, because the the line goes through both of them. Okay, yeah. So you So just let's start take M. Yeah. So we'll say one is equal to one times by six plus C. Is that correct? One uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so C is equal to one minus six is minus five. Yeah. So the equation then for CM? For CM is Y is equal to um, 1 X plus negative 5. Okay, that's it. Well, you could have said negative 5. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's question 3. Wow. Alright. Alright, so now the next question then says we must find the co coordinates of point C.
Now in order to find the coordinates of point C, we're going to have to take that equation for BC and that equation for CM and do simultaneous equations on them. Do you okay. know why? Uh, do I know why? Yes. Um, no, not really. Okay, simultaneous I'm, I'm equations. Sure. Simultaneous equations are used to determine the points of intersection of two graphs. Okay. okay, that's the graphical solution of simultaneous equations. Because normally okay. you'll do simultaneous equations algebraically, but the purpose, the graphical purpose of uh, simultaneous equations is to find the point of intersection of the two graphs. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to clear the screen. You got those two equations for me? Yep, I do. All right, so everything is going to disappear now, unfortunately, but if you just give me those equations again, y is uh, equal to? y is equal to negative a half x mm -hmm. plus 14 and a half all right and then you got y for cm um, is equal to 1x minus 5 all right so you say you know how to do the simultaneous equations oh uh, well uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit rusty but okay. uh, you well first you of all let's call them one and two. Yeah. Now normally you would now get an equation 1a or 2a where you get one of the variables alone on the left side. But yeah. we, we are fortunate. I mean both of our equations already have y alone on the left hand side. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So we could basically just make equation 1 equal to equation 2 because both of them are equal to y. Okay, I see. And then you just work it out. Yeah, so we've got x minus 5 is equal to minus a half x plus 29 over 2. Do you know why I've done that? 29 over 2. Uh, 2 times 14 plus 1. Yes, but the question is, do you know why I've written it that like that? Uh, so you can guess, so you can find the value for x. Well, obviously. But why did I yeah. change from a mixed number to an improper fraction? Um, makes it easier. <laughs> <laughs> now another tip I want to give you if ever you work with equations such as that that obviously is now an equation yeah. and the equation contains fractions all right yeah. multiply right through by the common denominator uh, okay. now 14 and a half can't be written as a fraction with a common denominator that's why I change it to an improper fraction because now we can see the common denominator is 2 yeah all right, so we're going to multiply right through by 2. Everything is going to be multiplied by 2. Common denominator. So that's going to become 2x minus 10 is equal to minus x plus 29. Do you agree with me? Mm. You yeah. see, You see now in one step, we got rid of the fraction. Yeah. That's the beauty. One step and the fraction is gone. Yeah, I see. All right, so now we just get all the x's alone on the left-hand side and the numbers alone on the right-hand side and then we divide right through by 3. Is that correct? Yep. So, so you get x alone. x is equal to 13. Yeah. And then we go to, let's say, equation number 2. It's the easiest of the two. So y is equal to 13 minus 5 so y is equal to 8 yeah. and then this the coordinates of point C would be 13 and 8 8 okay I see okay so what is nice about this question is that in the basically in the span of four questions we've done gradients we've done equations of straight lines we've done midpoint formula we've done simultaneous equations Mm. We've done perpendicular lines. Alright, so we've done a lot of the stuff about analytical geometry in the space of one question. 